I see the class is starting. Still disabled. Um, Deb, I'm getting the notice that I'm that the that I'm disabled. Okay, hold on. Let's see. You're not. Hey, there's John okay, Mueller. I I've got you co-host. Now can you share? Yes, now it appears okay. to be working. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now you should be able to see the uh, Hawks family. Yes. Confirmed? Okay, good. Let's proceed then. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family. It's a delight to be able to welcome you all again this evening for the Book of Mormon Perspectives Forum. And this time with Richard and Othello Hawks sharing the hand of God in the Book of Mormon and today. Richard Hawks uh, presented uh, to us in October on civil rights in the Book of Mormon. And any of you that uh, recall that will remember that we had an extended discussion afterwards, in spite of the fact that he's in Michigan an hour later, hour earlier than we are on, uh, on the central time. Um, but he gave his personal account and showed the Book of Mormon mm -hmm. message that we are all really one family and our focus upon differences divide us. And when we appreciate our commonalities, then uh, we can live as God intends. And so to be able to share the commonalities is a very important element. And he comes out of a background that gives us a very unique perspective. He served as president of the 70 for the community of Christ for a number of years. He retired, but he continues his ministry in camps and reunions and as an online ministry resource. His wife, Othella, works at Michigan State University and she is the director of placement services, if I understand correctly, having heard her share mm -hmm. testimony previously. And I know that what she's doing is helping people find their place in the world. And so to uh, appreciate the contribution these two are making not only with their son, but also in their service to humankind. Makes it so it's a real privilege to invite them and host them this evening. And so this evening they'll be addressing us on the hand of God in the Book of Mormon and today. Let us pray together. Dear creator and one who blesses our lives with love, hope, joy, all good things are worth. We approach you for your blessing as we study truths that have sprung forth from the earth. We represent differing viewpoints gathered here to inspect, to learn about ancient mysteries, each treated with respect. We tend to our own perspectives, gathering information to reinforce, yet ask that you help us listen prayerfully that we ascertain the divine course. For this evening, we hear from Richard and Othello Hawks unique among the presenters who have been giving our Book of Mormon talks. For they are African-Americans reflecting upon God's hand in the Book of Mormon, in their own lives, and in this promised land. Led from bondage, their ancestors have seen too many of our self-made chains, ones of our traditions obstructing social gains. The ones obstructing freedom obstructing human rights, political religions, the isms, and the ites. And yet, they come to testify they too are seeing God's hand throughout the struggles, the historic turbulence on going on even today in this land. And we ask your blessing on their voices that every word be heard, for they have insight into eternity, seeing your hand in the holy word. Thank you for your kindness to give our lives significant worth and for blessing us to extend your hands across this beautiful earth. Amen. Richard and Othello, the floor is yours. I'll stop the share screen and 
We invite you to take it over and share with us what you perceive about the hand of God. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it is, uh, I appreciate, we appreciate being asked to share this evening. Um, I would not call myself a Book of Mormon scholar. I am a strong believer. It changed my life radically when I was a freshman in college and has affected my life ever since. And um, just wanted to, to uh, share a kind of, well, testimony before we get into a few scriptures from the Book of Mormon about the hand of God in the Book of Mormon and today. Years ago when I was campus minister at Graceland, um, during a winter term class, Dr. Gaylord Shaw, uh, living there in Lamoni at that time, was asked to share, uh, give a class on the Book of Mormon. And uh, I knew uh, Gaylord uh, Shaw, Gay Shaw pretty well. And um, we may not have agreed on everything, but we were friends and that was above all else. He came to me and asked would I come and visit his class one day uh, to share my testimony about the Book of Mormon. And, uh, and I said, I'd be more than glad to. I was teaching a winter term class as well, so we coordinated our schedules. So I came to his class um, over in the science building. It was packed, it was full. One of the students in his class had just came to Graceland from Eastern Europe, from Bulgaria. Her name was Snezhana Dimitrova. And um, she happened to be in the class and I had met her uh, previously at an international student orientation. And uh, I was introduced as the campus minister from Graceland and uh, that I was not there to convert people, but to be a support, a spiritual support. And so after I met her during that orientation, she uh, was interested in who I was and was very open about sharing about her life in Bulgaria. I asked her one time, oh, what's the big the difference uh, in going to college in Bulgaria and Graceland? And she said right away, she said there were two major advantages of Graceland. One, she said, was uh, uh, library access was the biggest difference. There, the libraries all closed at 10 o'clock at night and didn't open until the next morning. She said at Graceland, you can be in the library all night and have unlimited access, and you didn't have to wait in line to get in the, into the library. The other thing she shared was that she came from a country where atheism was the state religion until only recently before she came to the United States. And uh, she realized that in our orientation and what I had shared that uh, it matters not what your religion is, we're here to support you in whatever journey you choose. And you're free to ask any questions you want. We're not here to convert you, but to support you. Anyway, Snijana was in the, the class that day that I shared. And, um, and she was really interested in what I shared about my testimony about the Book of Mormon. And uh, at the end of winter term, students had been in England and uh, the Bahamas other places, uh, many classes on campus. We decided to plan a worship service in uh, Cheville Chapel where they could share about their differing experiences they had um, during winter term. And I felt that to ask Snezhana, uh, would she be willing to share about her Book of Mormon class? And she was really excited and privileged. So that night we met in the Cheville Chapel. We had a huge circle, maybe 40, 50 people in the, in the big circle. And um, to, as we shared their perspectives, we passed this big ball of yarn across the, the circle so that uh, it would look like a huge web that connected all of us, uh, which is one of my favorite symbols of how we are connected and uh, by webs of relationships. And I shared near the, the end so when the ball of yarn was passed to her to share about her winter term class, I had no idea what she was going to say. Uh, I knew she was glad she was in the class. As soon as she grabbed that ball of yarn, she stood up and had her Book of Mormon with her and held it in her hand like she was preaching to us. And she got really excited 
about the Book of Mormon and about the class and what she learned because part of the assignment of the class is to read parts of the Book of Mormon. Neil Sherman. And she told all of us there that we should read this book and how valuable this scripture was that we had and that we have now. And I had never heard anyone so excited about the Book of Mormon as I heard from this young lady from Bulgaria where atheism was the state religion until recently before she came to the United States. And, um, and that kind of endeared us to her and her to us. Um, in fact, we were there when she graduated from Graceland and she became one of Devon's babysitters one semester. So we became very close to her as well as other uh, international students. So that just kind of furthers the commonality, I guess that we come from different backgrounds, different countries, but in this case, the Book of Mormon was that touchstone brought us together in a very unexpected and very powerful uh, way. Just want to share uh, just a few uh, e examples. Uh, certainly, this is just the tip of the iceberg um, about how God's hand touches our lives, or what does God's hand represent. In a, in a few scriptures. And so I'm going to um, to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to cut and paste these in the uh, chats. And um, that way we can kind of be on the same page. Uh, the first one I, uh, uh, oops, there, I was supposed to. Uh, from Mosiah, the first chapter. Say unto you, my sons, were it not for these things which have been kept and preserved by the hand of God, that we might read and understand of his mysteries and have his commandments always before our eyes, that even our fathers would have dwindled in unbelief. So the hand of God here uh, is an example of how God, through his hand, through his connecting with people, preserves uh, things that are important for our spiritual journeys. I could say a lot more about this, and, and you probably have more examples than I could have, but how if it were not for God's hands, we would not have the Book of Mormon if God did not preserve uh, through his hand uh, what has been uh, there to bless us with. Another uh, brief scripture this is taken from Alma. Um, Alma 7, uh, chapter 7, verse 9. Do you not remember that our father Lehi was brought out of Jerusalem by the hand of of God. And so this is one of many examples where God's hand leads us, gives us direction, perhaps even pointing the way uh, in, in terms of our journey uh, with, with God. Let, let me point out, uh, Richard is posting these on the chat. And so if you right. start to pull the chats up, then you can follow along and read. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, the next one. Uh, this is from Alma, the 21st chapter. Powerful analogy in, in this, this uh, scriptural uh, example. Yes, let us remember the words of Jacob before his death. For behold, he saw that a part of the remnant of the coat of Joseph was preserved and had not decayed. And he said, even as this remnant of garment, the garment of my son has been preserved, so, so shall a remnant of the seed of my sons be preserved by the hand of God and be taken unto himself while the remainder of the seed of Joseph shall perish, even as the remnant of his garment. 
again, God is able to preserve that which is important to, uh, to forward God's plan and, and purposes, uh, whatever they may be, and that is for the salvation of all people. The next one, another purpose uh, for God's hand. Fourth Nephi, first chapter. And there were no envyings or strifes, nor tumults, nor whoredoms, nor lines, nor murders nor any manner of lasciviousness. Surely there could not be a happier people among all the people who had been created by the hand of God. So this briefly mentions that God's hand creates as well as preserves and leads. These are, there are probably more, a lot more scriptures than this, but these are just three simple examples of God's hand and, and what does the, is the purpose of God's hand in preserving and creating and uh, uh, leading us uh, as an example of what God's hand, uh, how it was portrayed throughout the Book of Mormon and other scriptures uh, as well. So we go from that to God's hands creates to um, a little bit later in uh, the book of Moroni, the second chapter. Um, and this is more looking back into the ministry of Jesus when he came to this continent. Longer scripture, but um, very important about God's hand. The words of Christ, which he spake unto his disciples, the twelve whom he had chosen, as he laid his hands upon them. And he called them by name, saying, You shall call upon the Father in my name, in mighty prayer. And after you've done this, you shall have power that on him whom you shall lay your hands, you shall give the Holy Ghost. And in my name, you shall do it. For thus do my apostles. Now Christ spake these words unto them at the time of his first appearance, and the multitude heard it not, but the disciples heard it, and on as many as they laid their hands fell the Holy Ghost. And so here, God through his son Jesus um, extended his hand through the hands of Jesus. So through Jesus, we became. God's hands, that, that transfer of spiritual power and empowerment uh, that is uh, important about the laying out of hands uh, and so forth. So later in um, another example, now this may be relating to priesthood, but there's a principle here that goes beyond uh, priesthood. Moroni, the third chapter, the matter which the disciples who were called the elders of the church ordained priests and teachers. After they had prayed unto the Father in the name of Christ, they laid their hands upon them and said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ordain you to be a priest or I ordain you to be a teacher to preach repentance and remission of sins through Jesus Christ by the endurance of faith on his name to the end. Amen. So through us today, we are called to empower others as God's hands. Just a brief testimony in here. Part of my training when I began, went under World Church appointment back, way back in 1978, 79, uh, we took a lot of advanced leadership classes from World Church leaders. We we're also taking a few classes in um, in theology from St. Paul's Methodist, United Methodist Seminary in Kansas City. One of the first classes I took was uh, called Proclaiming, uh, Preaching and Proclaiming and the, the Sacraments. 
And we were asked as a class project to break up into small groups of three or four and to plan <clears throat> Ackerman service. Um, I was paired with two young men who were just out of uh, graduate school or undergraduate school training to be Methodist ministers. They had known about the RLDS church enough to appreciate who we were as ordained ministers. They were not ordained yet. One of the things that they um, wanted, we were asked to plan was uh, an, an ordination service. So they said, because you're ordained and we're not, we would like to plan a service where by laying out of hands, you're not technically ordaining us, but you would empower us in our gifts of ministry. And I remember one of them shared, we talked about our different gifts. He said he had the gift of visitation. In other words, of extending himself into the lives of people, uh, literally visiting people and being present with people. And he wanted to be empowered to, to further that gift of his ministry and, and another shared another gift. So when we had the service uh, for the class, we were, uh, and, and it came time for that, that laying out of hands, uh, in a way, I was praying for them by laying out of hands to bless, have God bless their gifts of ministry that they felt needed to be empowered. And even though it was a so-called class assignment for the three of us, uh, it was more than that. It was a special prayer to bless them and to bless their, their ministries at that time. And so the gift of empowerment uh, as God's hands is not just restricted to priesthood ministry uh, or just the ordinances. It is a gift of uh, ultimate uh, support that we give to others. And so empowering others is truly um, a spiritual gift. And the laying out of hands is such a powerful uh, image. Uh, when I lay hands on other people, whether it be praying for the sick or just praying for a need they have, um, part of my prayer is always that I stand there to represent God's presence and to uh, extend God's hands into this person's life through my hands. And that's a pretty awesome responsibility um, to be able to, to do that. But it's just saying that the hand of God as expressed in these few scriptures from the Book of Mormon uh, is extended through every one of us. Um, I don't know if you've ever sat with someone that was going through a crisis um, and, uh, and it perhaps had little or no words to share with them because you just didn't know what to say. But the only thing you could do is sit with them and just grab their hand and hold their hand because that's what was needed the most for them. There's something about the power of holding hands, of extending your hand and touching another life, another person, and allowing ourselves to be touched um, by other people uh, as well. So I'm just a, a strong um, proponent uh, that we are called, all of us are called by God through the Book of Mormon scriptures to, to reach out and touch other people's lives in any way possible. This pandemic has made it difficult because we have been told not to touch other people. Um, we've done things by Zoom. Uh, I participated in a, a witness uh, ordination uh, by Zoom and so forth. But uh, now that things hopefully are moving beyond the pandemic, uh, people I notice are excited about being able to shake each other's hands, to hug each other. I was just at a luncheon today with some of my um, high school classmates, former classmates. And uh, they were so excited in the first time in over a year and a half to get together, to actually shake each other's hand, to hug each other, lots of hugs, um, because they were just happy to be in the same room with each other. So to me, that's what God's hand uh, means for, for us, not only from the Book of Mormon and a few scriptures, but also what it calls us to do today. I was going to share with you a little bit about how important it is for us to preserve 
and to maintain that connection uh, with God, no matter how scary things may be or how doubtful we might be, how important that connection is uh, in, in our lives and lives of people that we touch. I'm a little bit shorter than Rich, so we had to adjust, but um, so appreciate that beautiful poem that was shared earlier, Brother DeBarth. What a wonderful, wonderful expression of love in terms of giftedness. Rich Hawks conned me into taking his hand about 40 some years ago. And Nancy will remember that um, we grew up in Seattle together in the church and uh, were teenagers there in that congregation and witnessed each other getting married and all kinds of special memories. And with me saying yes to him, he's taken me all over the world in ministry for Jesus Christ. I am so mindful that the gift of God's hand is prevalent in all of our lives. I remember a beautiful painting of Michelangelo and God's finger reaching down and touching man's hand. I always keep that in my imagery. And it's at my lowest times that I try to remember that he is forever in touch. As for all of us, this pandemic has touched our lives in so many ways. Surely the world has had a deep, deep loss. Countries have come to know that they don't stand alone in conquering things, but we must stand together and help and support each other. In my role as a director for careers for the College of Business, one of my majors that I oversee is the hospitality industry. I went from a 98% placement to most of my students losing their jobs in three months. And to see young people so devastated of what do I do next after spending four years in college? And I'm a career director with corporations calling me saying, we can't function, we're going out of business. It was heart wrenching. And everything I knew about how to do my job went out the window because there was no conformity of anything. So I began to create, but I didn't create, God created. Things I'd never thought of to do, how to do, what to do, what to say, handkerchiefs galore in my office, so many helps for our students. So many helps for those who are in need and hurting. I look back on it now and wondered how I even got through that, carrying so many wishes and hopes for young people. And I can testimony to this day that this little five foot hand is held by a greater power and saw me through all things. enlightenment of mind and spirit and ideas, sympathy and empathy for those who were in loss, redesigning programs and budgets to fill the needs. I say that not of myself, but each of you 
I am sure by the grace of God, I've managed through terrible times. This is where the church says, amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. God's hand, God's hand helped us through those times. Paul, can you hear me? Yes, Bill. All right. I, I'm having trouble getting in. Uh, oh, I, I was uh, listening to uh, Richard, your husband. And he mentioned about laying on of hands, not necessarily having to do with priesthood. Mm -hmm. uh, did I catch that correctly? Yes. Okay. I learned when I was living in Taiwan, I took classes in healing. Mm -hmm. And in, instead of saying that it was Jesus Christ who's healing, rather it was uh, by putting one hand on the, uh, which chakra is that? Is that the 12th or the first? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And then putting the other hand over the, the, the ailing part of the body, that there's healing taking place there. And, and, uh, and so I, uh, if ever I want to do laying on the hands, I, I want to try that. They call it uh, uh, handling this, the energies of the universe rather than <laughs> saying it's God is doing it. But still, God is of the universe, right? Yes. And there's so many ways to touch people and help them to feel your spirit and help them to feel supported as we reach out to Jesus. There's this wonderful poem that says, during the insecure moments of my life, when I feel unprotected and defenseless, I fear I will lose my grip on my heavenly father's hand. As a flash of panic sets in, my soul grows disquieted within. I hear the father's voice speak with soothing words of comfort. Don't be anxious about how firm the grip of your hand is in mine, for my hand is holding on to yours, and nothing will cause it to be slackened. Even in the most troubled hour, I will not allow you to pull away. There's this wonderful song that Rich and I heard way back early in our ministry, and I have it in my songbook and thought it really, really fit here. And so with your patience, I'm going to try to sing, I'll never let go of your hand. And uh, you'll hear Richard in the background. <clears throat> Ever 
everlasting father has made a covenant with you and he's stronger than this world you've seen and heard so don't you fear to show them all the love i have for you and i'll be with you everywhere in everything you do and even if you do it wrong and miss the joy i planned i'll never i'll never let go of your hand Even if you do it wrong and miss the joy I planned, I'll never, no, never, I'll never let go of your hand. Amen. 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 Thanks for having us, you guys. Blessings in all that you do. And remembering the ministry of Christ, who asked you to just reach that hand out and touch someone else and help their lives to be get it better, but also remembering that he holds us up and is the joy and ministry of all that we do. Amen. Well, thank you. That was so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to, to as a sending forth thought, uh, to share uh, words of a hymn, um, number 585 in Community Christ Sings. Uh, Jesus' hands were kind hands, doing good to all, healing pain and sickness, blessing children small, washing tired feet and lifting those who fall, Jesus' hands were kind hands, doing good to all. Take my hands, Lord Jesus, let them work for you. Make them strong and gentle, kind in all I do. Touch me with your spirit till I'm gentle too, till my hands are kind hands, quick, to work for you. So questions, comments? It's almost 10 o'clock our time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. We really appreciated that. Thanks. And Nancy would like to know if she can get a, a copy of the recording, Paul. The recording, uh, presuming, well, Robert Cook is at uh, the Nauvoo reunion, and I'm sure he'll be getting the link out to us one of these days, but I'm not confident it'll be tomorrow. Well, it's we'll primarily the song that she's interested in. I'm just oh. saying, it, was it recorded tonight? Yes, it was. Okay, the song so, was De touched. Deb has handled the recording, and we'll see about getting the link uh, out as soon as it's available. I'm not sure how long it's going to be under the circumstances. That's all right. I'll try to okay. attach it to an email within the next uh, few days. Good to see all of you guys. Thanks for having let us. Me, let me say thank you too, uh, Richard and Athela. I uh, deeply appreciate your coming thank to share you. with us and thank you. extending the hand of friendship uh, like this. I do want to give people a chance to ask questions and make their comments because it, uh, to me is extraordinarily touching your, your song and your your ministry, your lives, very much appreciate uh, that yours are the hands that extend the hands of Jesus. Amen. Amen.